Uh, good evening, uh, members of Redeemer, friends. It's good for us to uh, gather around God's Word once again, and we're back in Psalm 23. Uh, and tonight I want us to continue to reflect upon uh, these opening verses of the psalm. Uh, I'm going to read for us once again just the first four verses this time. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, this psalm is both, as I said yesterday, simple yet very deep and profound. We have no uh, uh, escapism here or a, 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 a kind of complacency in life. The, the kind of a, a cheap uh, way in which people sometimes use faith to deny the reality of the difficulties of life. No. This psalmist is very realistic. Life here is dangerous. There's enemies. We are in danger a lot. And yet, it's a psalm that speaks of peace and contentment in spite of the complexity and difficulty of life. And it is because he is rooted in the Lord himself and therefore he is ready to face everything. Now notice the psalm begins with the Lord and its whole drive throughout is the focus on the Lord who provides, cares for his own, for those who walk with him, who are in relationship with him. And this is the astonishing thing, isn't it? That the Lord enters into a relationship with us, that he owns us and we own him. My shepherd. This is what's necessary for all of us to do. We need to begin there and own the Lord as our shepherd. Now remember that the only way you and I can own the Lord as our shepherd is through the Lord Jesus Christ who lays down his life so that you and I may receive that beautiful privilege. And it's a privilege, therefore, that comes to us at great cost to the Lord himself because of our rebellion and our sin. And yet, the greatness of our shepherd is that he takes up the responsibility to make us his own. And now David reflects on this relationship that he has with the Lord as his shepherd. And he says, first of all, I shall not want. There is nothing, nothing, that would be lacking in my life because the Lord would provide. Now, we don't have time to, to, to fully uh, unpack this whole uh, uh, understanding of what it means, uh, but uh, just briefly, in Psalm 34, um, once again, uh, David, in that uh, beautiful psalm where he talks later about uh, a, a taste and see that the Lord is good. 
he, uh, in verse 8, he, he comes in verse 10 and he says, The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. They lack nothing. And that word lack is the same word that is here for want. And so we are told here that those who trust in the Lord, who seek from the Lord all that they need, they won't have any lack, any want. Now, it's fascinating because this very word is used again in uh, uh, Kings, 1 Kings 17. You remember the story where uh, the prophet Elijah goes out of Israel to the town of Zarephath, and there he meets a widow, a widow who is now at her last, going to make her last piece of bread for her and her son. And the prophet asks her to make him bread first. And she says, but that's, we don't have much. And he tells her, bring me a little water and bread and then you and your son can eat, because he says to her, For this says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And that word empty is the same word for want. So here in this familiar story of the widow and her son who every day has this little bit of flour and this little bit of oil that never runs dry because the Lord supplies. So uh, David says, I shall not want. The Lord will supply what is needed for his people. And you see, it takes faith to live there. It takes faith to live there. And notice, David is not saying, I deserve, I demand. No, he's making a statement of what it means to live by faith. Now he unpacks what God will do for him as his shepherd. And it's a beautiful description here. Notice, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Now, the moment we think of green pastures, we think of all the sheep in Ireland and England, and the beautiful green pastures. But remember, David is writing in Palestine. So this is the expression of faith, that the Lord would lead him into green pastures. The Lord leads his sheep where they will find the nourishment they need, because that's the kind of shepherd he is. More than that, he leads me beside still waters. Now, it's fascinating that sheep don't drink at fast-running streams. They, they want slow water. And it shows the special, not merely the insight David have into taking care of sheep, but he's saying the Lord has that same insight. He knows what we need. He knows where we will find the nourishment we need. And he leads us there. And then he says, he restores my soul. Now, People, uh, the, the word restore, uh, restores my soul, could mean that he works spiritual life within me, uh, uh, the kind of thing that Psalm 19 talks about, the word that restores and uh, my soul, draws me to God. But most likely, I believe, he speaks here about the rest that we find through the Lord's care. The Lord not only provides us with food and uh, a, a place uh, 
to drink well, but he, he leads us to that place where we are refreshed and restored for life. And it's found in him through his provision. And then he tells us, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me down the right paths, then the paths that he wants me to take so that his name is exalted in my life. God leads us down the path that is absolutely right for us so that we may glorify him. And now, notice, the shepherd no longer goes before us because the shepherds in the Middle East walk in front of the sheep, not behind them. But now he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. All of a sudden, the shepherd is no longer ahead, but now he is beside us. And here, the valley of the shadow of death is that the valley of deep darkness. It's an image of, of deep distress, deep danger, even death itself. And he says, you walk with me. I will fear no evil. Now, for us New Testament believers, this has an even deeper meaning because we know that the Lord Jesus Christ has walked through death for us. And so now in our hour of need, when we are near to death, the Lord Jesus comes beside us and he walks with us. We are not left alone even in that final trial even as we enter death, we are never left alone because Jesus is with us all the way through. We are with him forever now. And David extends that presence of the Lord and the security we have. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, the rod was a, a, a club uh, that the shepherd had in his, in his sash or whatever he wore around his, his belt. It was a, a club with which he could beat uh, the uh, wild animals. And his, his staff is, of course, his, his crook with which he could walk, but also he could control the sheep. And if they wandered away, he could bring them back. And so uh, the comfort here is really the protection of the Lord from enemies, but also from ourselves that wandered away. And so the psalmist is saying, the Lord is able to keep me in whatever danger I find myself. He will keep me safe. May you experience the joy of walking with the Lord throughout your life, whatever you face, whatever troubles you have. Let's pray. Lord, we are grateful that we may know you as our shepherd. May the comfort that comes from your shepherding care truly bring us grace and mercy. And may your rod in your staff comfort us as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death and restore us we pray in jesus name amen hope you have a wonderful evening bye bye